here we are, Mom. Doing a podcast. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah. You're here from Santa Fe. Right. Visiting from Santa Fe. Um, how does it feel to be in L.A.? Well, I always love it. I used to come here when I was little to see my grandma. Mm. Yeah. So it's been something that I'm familiar with. You, gr you grew up, right? Your your cousins and yeah, your aunts, right? Had lived in L.A. Right. They moved um, between the wars. Some of them moved over here and from started, New Mexico. From New Mexico, started businesses and what kind of businesses? Uh, restaurant mostly. What kind of restaurants? Uh, n with New Mexican food. New Mexican food. Yeah. Where were their restaurants at? Uh, let's see. I'm not really sure where. It was kind of like I, oh, by well, the, the airport, oh, right? Oh, wait. No, there's one. One was near Disneyland. Okay. Ac across from the street from Disneyland. And it was called Rudy's Spanish Restaurant. But <laughs> but it was New Mexican food. It was really good. They made the best chili rellenos and sopa pias and tortillas. They just melted in your mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did they have another one by the airport? Later? Um, I don't know. They had different, the um, other cousins, I think, had, well, Uncle Joe and and David, his his son, you know, they had another restaurant, mm -hmm. but I'm not too sure where it was. And then a Aunt Priscilla um, worked in a restaurant, and then she sold it, and she had uh, some property in Playa del Rey. Mm -hmm. They were hard workers, and they're pretty smart, right? Yeah, they were, they did pretty good. she had a, was a beautiful house up there, above the, on the on the. It was, two twenty Reese Street. I remember the address. Yeah, overlooking the ocean. Yes. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. We got to go there. Yeah. Uh, towards the end, right? Right. For being around. Right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean, going going back to New Mexico, right? Uh -huh. You they moved out here to L.A. To California, and you would visit your cousins. You would tell me. Yeah, we used to go by train, and we'd get out, out of the train, and we'd smell all the flowers. Oh, it was beautiful then. Now it's not the same, <laughs> but you know, it was. It used to smell really good. The were there like as many freeways and stuff in those? What years were no. did you used to come out here? Oh well, I was born in '46, so you know, it was, um, whenever you know they could travel, and we'd we'd come by car and. We used to get car sick, and the, it was really windy. The w the the highway, uh -huh. you know, was not wide then, not so wide. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you 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 would come out here with the with the free you know with the freeways, because I heard something about the freeways that uh, we didn't have freeways then. I don't think. But in L.A. I heard uh, I heard that the I don't remember I was too little. Uh, yeah. The oil industry or somebody bought all the cuz they used to have a lot of they had like trams here, like mm -hmm. a big tram system. Oh yeah, they did. In they LA. did. Yeah, they did. We used to take that. But yeah, we used to come by train or drive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, not train but trams or whatever inside of LA yeah. to get around. Yeah, and yeah, to get in around in LA. That's uh -huh. how we got around. And then, uh, and then they bought all the trams, and then the companies, and they bought the oil. I don't know if it was the oil or the car industry. They bought all the tram companies, mm -hmm. and then closed them down. Uh -huh. And then, then they ended up. I don't know if that's the truth or how it went down, but they, you know, this big Got old highway. Uh -huh. Yeah, this big old highway system that we have. Yeah, now. I guess they still have have some trams in San Francisco, but right. not here. Yeah. Right, but in Glendale, there's so, like they still have some of the tram. Uh, tracks, you know, mm -hmm. in the streets. Mm -hmm. So, and then you look at the the yeah. old pictures, and and you see how many of those trams were around. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so it was, it was like less pollution mm -hmm. in those days. Yeah, more flower smelling. Right. Yeah. Even in the neighborhood where my aunt lived. Yeah. I, I just loved to, to walk around to smell, you know, the flowers. It was uh -huh. just gorgeous. Yeah. 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 And you're f like New Mexico, right? You know, like the Santa Fe, New Mexico. Like you, the, your family's been there, right? I was born and raised there. Mm -hmm. My dad was from Las Cruces, from the south. Mm -hmm. My mom was from Taos, and they met in Santa Fe because he was in the legislature mm -hmm. from Doña Ana County. And then 
Um, my mom came States. down to visit a friend, and then they met, and they married two weeks later. Wow. He was a fast operator. <laughs> um, how, long, how many years, how many years have, have they been around in New Mexico? My like your, like your, your, your dad, my grandfather, your dad in New Mexico, how many years, how, how many years can they trace back their, um, oh. their family? Oh, to fi well, my mom to 1598 when the first Span Spaniards came. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then <coughs> um, they, did, they couldn't bring many women, so they, they mixed with the Native Americans there. And when I did a DNA test, I have 24% Native American. My dad was from Apache country down, so down south, and my mom from Taos, where they have the Taos Pueblo, so... I think probably more more Taos mm -hmm. uh, Native Americans. Yeah, yeah. Used to give or, uh, used yeah. to give tours. Mm -hmm. Used to give tours. You know, you've, you've done a few different jobs. You're a teacher for how many years? About thirty five years. Thirty five years. Mm -hmm. And you taught from kindergarten all the way through high school. Yeah, preschool all the way preschool. through. Preschool. Uh, uh, um, actually, junior college in Germany. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your mom was a teacher. Yeah, we come from seven generations of teachers. So when I asked you, <laughs> shall I yeah. bring that up? Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> when I asked <laughs> Al what he wanted to do when he was young, mm. uh, and he said, teach, I want to be a teacher. Mm. <laughs> and I go, mm. oh, my God. <laughs> but he did become a teacher. Here and, we are. And Here we he's, are. Yeah, and I'm happy with what you're teaching. and. So going back to the going back to the you know the used to give tours of Santa Fe and how old the uh -huh. how old the city is it's like people think that you know um, I don't know, like the the East Coast or but well, the East Coast is older like but actually the oldest town the oldest capital the oldest house yeah. the oldest yeah. church everything's right. actually in Santa Fe New Mexico right yeah they was Cause founded the Spanish, in 1610 because yeah. the Spanish came up before the English arrived right yeah right. So they, um, they were there. Um, we were we were actually part of. They were there first, and then uh, we were part of Mexico from eight, 1821 to about eighteen fifty two or so, about twenty five years. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, Americans came, and we became. We were a territory for sixty years, and then we became a state in nineteen twelve. Nineteen twelve. When my dad was born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Arizona and uh, New Mexico, right? They were they were a territory, right? Yes, and I think uh, Arizona beat us by a few days becoming okay. a state. I don't okay. know. Okay. I don't know if anybody knows. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it was uh, it was always uh, it's always uh, pretty cool. Just people, a lot of people don't know the history mm -hmm. uh, and oh. how old, like just that, like you know Santa Fe and some oh, of the towns are. It's so old, you know, and and um, it used to be. Uh, it was actually built on springs, so we really don't have too many basements. Mm. And then there are ghosts. Springs? What do you mean springs? Uh, just water. Oh, water, water springs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then they, they had... They springs, <laughs> springs of a bed. I was like, they're bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, uh, yeah, well, they had, we had lots of pine trees, you know, kind of like in the forest. Yeah. And then they cut them down, and, and then... Um, the house where I'm living is going on 200 years old, wow. built when we were part of Mexico, so mm -hmm. it's real adobe mm -hmm. and very well built. Uh, adobe adobe bricks is like mud and straw. Straw, mm -hmm. right? And it keeps the the in the winter stays warmer, or stays to keeps the the if you have heat inside keeps keeps the the house warmer, and then in the winter I'm sorry the summertime it stays cooler. Right, right, yeah. But now with the climate change, which uh -oh. some people don't believe, it, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is hotter. Biden's you know. the best. It, it is hot. <laughs> he teases me, <laughs> and it is warmer. So I have a Mitsubishi. It's you know, one of now. those. I'm sweating. Yeah, so that's what they have all over Europe. Like the little, what do you call those? The, but it's Mitsubishi. What do you call them? The yeah yeah the the where they build the air into the into the yeah, room, right they're just it's just a little machine up on the top and mm -hmm. it's got got um, heat or or coolant mm -hmm. it's pretty cool yeah they have those 
in Armenia and Europe because of all the old buildings. You know, they have all the old buildings. Mm -hmm. And they can't put the new kind of heat in there. You're a ESL teacher. What are some of the things you've taught in school? Uh, well, I was a language teacher, so I taught Spanish and German and ESL and English as a bilingual. second language. Right, and I taught history, New Mexican and world history, but I taught those subjects to the bilingual kids mm -hmm. who just came recently from, who went recently from Mexico, and mm -hmm. uh, most of them. Mm -hmm. I did get sometimes somebody from India or whatever, but most of them were from Mexico. Mexico, and then Central America, right? Yes, yeah, I got some. I had some from Peru and a few, but mostly from Mexico, and they were just wonderful kids. And then they, uh, <coughs> yeah, it took them. Well, it took them a while to learn ES uh, English because they were older, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you, uh, I just remember you, like fighting for these kids to, you know, because a lot of kids they they come here and then they drop out of school or high school. Yeah. Yeah. And when you were teaching high school, yeah. and you would like really encourage them, and I saw a lot of the kids right. that you encouraged to, they ended up, you know, going to college and being like the first kids in their college to right. first people in their family to go to college. Right. Took me a, f a while to figure out how to reach them because um, if you g give them a, a project, you know, they're, they if I would give them a project, they weren't too interested. But if I have them share work with the other students there that they knew, then they would work really hard and try hard because they love to share. Mm. That's what, what I always love to do, too. Yeah. We have uh, some, some friends in Capoeira. For, they do Capoeira. And one of the guys actually goes to universities and, uh, you know, does, like, these uh, gatherings or meetups. And it, they, the, the statistics are if you have one friend, you're, like, like ninety percent more likely to, to finish or stay in stay in school, mm -hmm. stay in college or whatever, not drop out. Yeah. If like one friend, if you make right. one friend. Yeah, and then some of them were, you know, real personable, and they could, uh, they could, reach out to other students, and then some would just never learn much English because they would hang around with their friends who spoke f Spanish. Uh, they learned hopefully later on. Hopefully they learned later on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My uh, my uncle, right? He's uh, he wrestled, right? He's a yeah state my, champ in my in, brother uh, Albert. Yeah, yeah. In high school, and then went mm -hmm. to wrestle at Stanford. Yes. And then we were watching the high school wrestling movie, the Gary the Junkyard Dogs, right? Yes. On uh, Amazon Prime, and you're like, oh, I would have, I would have wrestled. <laughs> I wish I would have wrestled, <laughs> could have wrestled, but in my days they made us wear dresses to school you and did cheerleading we, instead. Yeah, we couldn't do any sports. Yeah, mm -hmm. I graduated in '65, uh -huh. so they, you know, they just did not allow it then. Yeah, I think it was a couple of years later or year l that they could wear jeans, but in my so day they couldn't. Yeah, only skirts or dresses. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, like I guess the, you know women's or you know, girl wrestling is the high, fastest uh, high school sport now mm -hmm. in the country. Wow. Well, my brother was really good at it, and he used to hide behind the couch, and he would attack me, and he'd say, "This is the scissors. This is the banana splits," mm -hmm. and he liked to attack me because I would fight back, <laughs> and that helped me, I think, the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What do you to think, defend myself, yeah. What do you think about me doing jujitsu and the grappling when I first started? Oh, I was so happy because you were wanting at that time to go to the Navy SEALs mm -hmm. because your dad was a Green Beret and you... My first jujitsu coach, right, was, uh, uh, was, yeah. was talking to me about it. Right, and so I was really worried because the, the recruiter called me and, and I said, please don't take my son, he's my only son. And... So the next thing I heard is you went to a jiu-jitsu class mm -hmm. and you liked it so much that you continued doing it. I had, I had prayed and prayed that they, you know, you wouldn't have to go to the Navy SEALs so and go through what your dad worked, went through. It yeah. worked out. Yeah. <laughs> I was very happy about and it. And I chose a different path. Right. You chose the right path. Thanks to my prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going back to uh, like uh, you know, grow growing up and 
or being in New Mexico, how was the, you know, now, I mean, this, the city hasn't really grown that much. It, it was the capital back in, back when you, in, since, forever, since forever, but there wasn't too much, uh, the growth, because of what, I mean, there's not too much water there. It's the desert, right? Yeah, it's well. So how many people live now in Santa Fe? About eighty thousand, eighty-five thousand now, and uh, yeah, it's getting unfortunately more expensive. You know, to to buy a house there. Why is that? <laughs> because a lot of people are coming, and the demand is bigger. And like when they have an earthquake here, or you know, mm. some disaster somewhere, they want to go. They yeah. they visit Santa Fe and they love it and they want us to, to live there. Mm -hmm. So that's still happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The, the growth, like, cause I, we having the school there was interesting, right? Starting my, my jujitsu gym there. Yeah. You started your, your business there and wherever you go, you always had lots of followers, lots of students. So I was happy. I was happy you did it that you did that business and that you were teaching. <laughs> uh, at the end of this year, it's going to be 25 years. Wow. That Unbelievable. I've had the, the gym. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think that's marvelous. I think that's really great. I'm happy about that. What are some of the people that you've seen around town that have come through the gym over the years? In Santa Fe? Or? Yeah, in Santa Fe. Um, well, Grant... Was this Collins? I Collins, yeah. He has a yeah. gym in the Laguna Niguel. Right. Um, um, gosh, the one that um, bought the business from you. Um, Tom Pless. Tom Pless, yeah. Um, but he's in Texas now. Uh, you have quite a few students that, you know, started their own business. Mm -hmm. They've done well, became black belts. You have you. Did a really, you do a really great job, and a lot of uh, they win a lot of medals when they go to competitions. So, because you're a great teacher too. <laughs> Thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. <laughs> what do you think about me fighting MMA? Oh yeah, that was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, that was, but uh, you know, I had to uh, go along with what you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You glad I don't fight anymore? Yes, I'm did glad. Did you ever? You went to one, of, a few of my fights, right? Uh, yeah, I did. Well, Sweeney, in Santa, in, in Fe, in Santa yeah, Fe, yeah, yeah, right. And so it was the the downtown, the the it was At the, the city hall, the Sweeney Center. Yeah, yeah so it's that now was, that used to be the, that used to be the high school, and then and they the turned it into Sweeney the city gym. hall. Mm -hmm. And then that was your gymnasium, right? And right from Santa Fe up. High, and then it became City Hall. And I saw Kennedy there. That, Rob, you know, the president, mm -hmm. John F. Kennedy, when he was campaigning. Mm -hmm. And I saw his red hair, and I thought, oh, my God, I've never seen hair that color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I was happy that, that, you know, you were there mm -hmm. when you were there. At least I had you for a few years mm -hmm. living there. Um, what do you love about Santa Fe? Uh, it's unique, and it's kind of uh, European and... Um, we ha we our business main business is tourists tourism tourism, and so I have also benefited from that because I do Airbnb with it since I retired from teaching, mm -hmm. and so I rent out the property there, and it's I was able to fix up that old house the two hundred year old house because yeah. my parents when they got older they were never able to keep it up, mm -hmm. so. Put a lot it's of pretty much right, it. right across the street from the state capitol building, right? Yeah, it's a half a block from there, mm -hmm. the roundhouse. You know, I, I kind of tell people I have a picture of your, of my grandfather, your dad, in front of the office downstairs. I don't mm -hmm. know if you saw it, oh. that one with Helen, he, him with Helen Keller and the oh governor. Yeah, oh yeah, I have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm very proud of just the all the. I mean, you too, like you, your mom, your your dad, my you know, grandma, grandpa, grandpa. And just their dedication to the community and helping people. Right. Yeah, dad was and mom. From battered, from battered women's shelters to boys and girls clubs to, right. um, yeah, so many things I don't even remember. Yeah, 
Yeah. But I know that he, you know, he worked for pro bono for so many years of his right. of his law. He was career. in the le- legislature twice when he was young. You know, he was in the State House Leg- of Representatives for um, from Doniana County, and then he moved to Santa Fe, and then he was from Santa Fe County, mm-hmm. um, the representative, and then he practiced law <coughs> for I don't know sixty some years, and then. Uh, he retired and then he went back to work again, <laughs> part time. But he was—he lost his eyesight. Right when he was sixteen, it was an accident, and he used to make the youth go to military camps in the summer. Okay. Uh, between the wars, and so they sent him to military camp, and he was quite daring and he, uh, athletic, and he did a dive off the. Uh, in the swimming pool off the board, which they didn't have very safe facilities. And he did a flip, and he hit the corner of his eye uh, on the board below. And so it got infected, but he went to the infirmary, and they said, take an aspirin. Mm. And unfortunately, it was more serious than that. And His eyes got infected, right? Yeah, and then the optical nerves being connected, uh, both of them, you know, got infected and so they finally sent him to Walter Reed Army Hospital in Washington DC when he was just 16 and he went there and um, they gave him operation after, after operation and the story is that the king of Siam came in and took his vi- his most important last operation and so he I don't think they could have done much in those days anyway they didn't know that much in the 20s about about um, saving eyesight, so they gave him as glass eyes. He took they his took eyeballs out, his, out. Yeah, and gave him glass eyes. And it used to scare me when I was a little kid. Yeah. He'd open up his eye, eye socket, and it was like empty. He, when hollow. my friends would go, he said, "See, I'm blind in one eye and can't see out of the other." <laughs> he had a real sense of humor, and you and we didn't know he was blind because he didn't act like it. Right. No. Till we were older, he was like a judge. He was a, yeah. you know, he was a, con- a Congress, state, state Congress, and he was he was a attorney. Yeah. House of Representatives. He was a county commissioner. He was a judge in Los Alamos for the for that spy case. What was it? The Rosenbergs. Yeah, he tried and them at the local level, right? Yeah, and then they, they just sentence. passed him up. Yeah. They sent they sent them at the federal level, right? They sent them yeah, they them sent to him death for I, espionage. I guess I yeah yeah. I yeah. It was that's unfortunate. The nuclear the nuclear secrets. They invented the atomic bomb, right, in uh, Los Alamos, yeah. New Mexico. Right. Yeah, in Los Alamos, and um, <coughs> yeah, they s- one doctor said that. Um, <coughs> bomb which exploded when my mom was carrying me three months that that affected my the color of my eyes which are blue two-tone blue and, and brown I got the blue from my grandmother and the brown from my dad but um the um <coughs> yeah my mom was pregnant uh when the bomb went off and she was carrying me about I think I was three months uh in to the pregnancy she was three months and then uh the doctor said it was a somatic bu- mutation that caused that i don't really know <laughs> yeah because they were testing a lot of the atomic bombs and stuff well it was the first one okay yeah yeah they, yeah, they before were testing they dropped it. the bomb before they dropped the bomb in right. japan right 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 and so who knows i watched Oppenheimer the movie <laughs> it was interesting so going back to your dad right he, he lost his eyesight and yeah. then, you know, you, you correct me, the story, but he got sent to L.A. to live with his sister. And to, you know, I don't to do what? Um, well, all I, re- all I remember is after that, he came back to New Mexico. He might have stayed a short while with her, but he went, to, went back to Las Cruces, New Mexico, okay. which is down south. And he wanted to go to college because in those days... Blind people could were only allowed to sell candy or weave baskets, and that he wanted more than that, and he wanted to go to college. And they they weren't allowed. Blind people were not allowed. So he uh, wrote the governor and the senator and everybody, you 
know, as we could over and over again. And finally they said, okay, you can go, but you get no special privileges. So he went to New, Me to New Mexico State, which is in Las Cruces, really good university. That you went to, right? That I went to for a while. And from there he got a scholarship to Georgetown University Law School, the first blind person to go there, too. And then he came back and passed the bar. It's very hard to pass the how bar in New Mexico. Through, how did he get through uh, college and studying and being blind? And he had a um, tape recorder. He had a, yeah, he used a, he had a microphone and he, he recorded the classes and then uh, his, the fellow students would read to him. Yeah, he was. Like out of the books and stuff, out of the textbooks? Yeah, yeah. And he was very charming and they all loved to Read to him. And, and, and law school, too, I guess, right? Uh, that was it. The at, same, uh, the same high, at, high college at, and, and yeah, law Yeah, Georgetown, school. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, why, didn't your, why didn't he allow you to go to Texaco or why didn't, oh, why didn't they <laughs> teach you? Story. Why didn't they teach you Spanish at home, you and your brother and sister? Well, my aunt and uncle. Yeah, my parents were punished when they spoke Spanish, you know, when they were growing up because actually we're, we're supposed to be a bilingual state, you know, we're, we're supposed to be teaching in Spanish, but um, then all the English speakers came and then it was just uh, the thing to teach only English. And so you, they weren't allowed to speak Spanish at school. And so they would get punished and so they didn't want us to be, you know, to have the same fate. They didn't want us to suffer. And then they thought they, they were thinking that we would be behind in school if we learned Spanish first. And so they spoke English at home. They only spoke Spanish when they didn't want us to understand, but we got the sound system. And so that, that, that helped, but I... The sound system? What do you mean? Uh, I, you know, we heard them speaking oh, I gotcha. when they didn't want us to understand. Yeah. And then my grandmother would come from Los Angeles. Jesusita was her name, and she would say, Ay, qué vergüenza que no hablan español. Oh, what a shame that you don't speak Spanish. But um, the, my parents always said they thought they could teach us when, they were, when we were older, but it doesn't work that way. You have to learn when you're a baby. You have to, you know, learn from the get-go. And then, so I had to go to, to Spain to learn my junior year in you college. Went, you studied abroad, right, for a year? Yeah, so the University of Madrid. You became a Spanish teacher, yeah. a German teacher. Yeah, so that, so I came back speaking, speaking Castilian, and I had to change back to the New Mexican Spanish because people thought you were putting on airs if you do that. It's just like a an American speaking the British English. Yeah. What about, like, the Texaco? Why didn't you... Talk oh. about the prejudice. Um, Pre well, Pre yeah. Prejudice. Preg well, I don't know. Why, why didn't your dad allow you to go to Texaco to get gas at Texaco? Yeah, he wouldn't allow us to go <laughs> to to those stations because he was um, bullied, you know, when he was young because he had black hair and when he was uh, when he was uh, before he lost his sight, and they he, they would throw rocks at him from the people that came in from Texas and so on, and they were pretty mean. And so he remembered that. Uh, so he just uh, wouldn't allow Held us to go to those <laughs> <laughs> places. Uh, and then Santa Fe was really open. They were very open-minded. Even in Las Cruces when he first started working as a lawyer, mm. Uh, well, he started working in. He started working in Las Cruces, right? Yeah, Santa Fe. With, in, in Las Cruces with my mom, and okay. so they had to sell insurance, and and then you know they people were not so confident because he was young and and um, Hispanic and you know blind, blind, yeah. <laughs> Didn't just the yeah. So he went to Santa Fe, and the minute he put up his sign, he didn't have a problem. He got lots of business. My mom was his secretary for a while. And then how did he get into, like, politics and, and that kind of a... Well, he, when he married my mom, he, he was already uh, a representative from Doniana County okay. down south. And then 
That's why he was in Santa Fe, and that's how he met gotcha. my mom from okay. a friend. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It seems like uh, it seems <laughs> like not too long ago, right when when my, your mom, my grandma passed, and he was by himself for a lot of years. Yeah, ninety two, okay. she passed away, and then uh, I took care of him for fourteen years after she yeah, passed away. I got he, I graduated high school in ninety four, and so I got to spend a lot of time with him. Mm -hmm. um, in his later years, yeah. still very like sharp and um, still was out was you know I, I, very like very sharp and very like hardworking. He worked yeah. till the end, just to, just how he was wired. Yeah, and uh, until five o'clock, and then he would smell the roses. Always on the dot, he was done. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he was all he was young at heart. Yes, he was very young at heart. I would tell him these these things. I would I was. I was going to try to do and if it was business related or you know investment whatever things he'd be all excited like a kid yeah and so I just remember thinking like man I want to be like that when I'm when I'm his age yeah he's in his 80s already and you are like him a lot <laughs> and then when you when you won the silver medal and you told him I, I won the silver medal silver medal yeah and he says why didn't you win the gold <laughs> so yeah, you got, went back and got the gold <laughs> yeah I got mad I was like, four <laughs> at, the, at first right I was like you know why, you know, yeah. did, I did really good. It was like in the in the world, right? So yeah. it was a big deal. And, yeah. Especially being American. And, and then yeah. it's like, no, you should be getting gold. Because the, the Brazilians, they were doing it since they were little. And you just yeah, learned just, it. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I was coming from New Mexico, right? To right. To go to Brazil. Everything was in Brazil. And so, yeah. 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 It was special. Special. I'm really lucky. Yes. To have uh, an amazing family. Yes. And we're lucky to have you. <laughs> Amazing mom, mom, and I always, I always say, I want to say it here, like everything, anything good, that 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 comes from me, it's directly because of you. And I have an, I have a great dad and your as dad well. Was good too. And of course when your parents, but like, it was because of you. And there's good oh. things that people they're grateful to me. It's because of your influence and because of you. Well, thank you. But also for um, grandpa and grandma. For sure, for sure. <laughs> she, you, she, he called, you called her Nana in those days, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, one of my early memories too. Well, they put, they, they asked me to be a pallbearer when I was like, I don't know, was, it, was 14 or, yeah, I was about 14, 16, I don't know. For what? When she passed. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So ni was it 92, you said? 92, yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, I was like 15, 16, right mm -hmm. at the time. And so, uh, so uh, yeah, they asked me to be a pallbearer, and uh, they remember the St. Francis Cathedral was, was like packed, right? It was there was like standing room only, and uh, she influenced, she helped a lot of people as a teacher, yeah, including my dad. She right. was his teacher and in yeah. elementary, and always watched out for him. She remembered, yeah, and she took she, uh, he he remembered her very fondly. Yeah. So even though you guys separated, right? Like mm -hmm. they, f the family still asked him to be a pallbearer for her because they knew how much she meant to him. Right. right. Yeah, he like he would tell me, you know, when I got to live with him in New York in high school, how yeah, there's like certain angels that he's had in his life, and she was one of them, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for her right. caring and going the extra steps. Yeah. She was she really a wonderful person and teacher, yeah. Grandma, mother. She during a, at the time when I was a teenager, she was very active in in clubs and things, you know, through different organizations. And she gave up everything so that she, <coughs> I'm gonna lose my voice now, uh, so that she could watch, you know, make sure that we were okay because we were teenagers and, you know. Getting uh, into trouble. Yeah. Staying out of trouble. Make sure. Yeah, she made sure and she, people would come. I lived, the house is close to this, on the way to school, and they'd come and visit on the porch, and she'd listen, and she'd open the door, and she'd say, watch your language. <laughs> and then when they were, she'd listen on the phone to find out when parents were out of town, to find out when they were going to have parties, when we were going to have parties. <laughs> And she would show up with potato chips and cokes and everything, and and the, they'd she'd knock and they'd open the door and they'd say, "Well, hi, Mrs. Gonzalez," and 
And so she went in and, and you know, they were out happy to see her, you know, <laughs> that she was made sure everything was fine and that we were okay. But what can happen if... Uh, Even when I taught, she would, she would show up to my class. <laughs> in school? Yeah. And she would help me, yeah. She would see the kids that weren't, uh, it was sort of f slow and falling behind and not, or not paying attention. She After would go she retired, to she would just come and yeah. support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where do you think that comes from, that, uh, that uh, nature of, of well, wanting to, just going the extra mile and helping? I think we have, we're born with service genes, you and my whole family. My dad was a lawyer and he served people and teachers too. And we just always want to help. And that's, that's where that comes from. Some people have different kind of genes that, that um, a salesman maybe, you know, I don't know. But we have the service genes. So 1946, like the, you know, the kids say, oh, you're a boomer. Baby you're a baby, boomer. You're a baby boomer, but they, they say, you're a boomer. You know, like you're yes. old, you know, like the... <laughs> You know, like I don't outdated, you know. I don't <laughs> think I'm old though. <laughs> I still think of myself as young, but I know I'm well, seventy eight. We, we, we have uh we have Savage, right? He's your same age. He was mm -hmm. born in nineteen forty six, but he still mm -hmm. trains. Mm -hmm. And he's still here. Uh and he's moving and he's you know Yeah, it's good. Doing his thing, right? So mm -hmm. it's all relative, right? It's what right. how you how you uh um live your life, right? Live right. your life, your lifestyle. Yeah. And one of the things I, I always love, uh, you and, you know, like your, your, you know, my grandfather, you guys are always so positive. Yeah. Like optimistic. optimistic. He, he was optimistic. And yeah, after he had a stroke, I took care of him for almost four years. And uh, one, whenever he would become lucid for a short while, I, he would say, Thank you, Virginia, for believing in me. So that told me that. He thought he was going to get better, and he they didn't. Believed to yeah, be he believed that he was going to get better, and so I took care of him till God took him. You know, so so um, yeah, I was teaching then, and I would turn him every two three hours at night, and I had help during the day. So. Yeah. So after after uh, after. Uh, you know, we lived in Santa. Where I was born in Santa Fe when I was like four years old. We moved to Germany. Mm -hmm. Do so. I was about four years old, I think, when we went to Germany. Yeah, you were about four years old. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I was. We, we, we went there during Oktoberfest. We went to Munich, Germany, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Went to during the Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. And why did you decide to go to Germany and take take uh, my sister? Why well, take take two kids to? Because I was, I was pretty devastated after the divorce, and I thought, what have I always wanted to do that I couldn't do? And that was to learn German fluently, even though I, ta I taught it. I wasn't f a fluent speaker, so that's what I wanted to do. And then I wanted you to know your roots, because Jay was, your dad was from Germany. He was born in Gelnhausen, and um, his mom was had to give you up when you were, I give you know, him up yeah. when he was two. So they put him in an orphanage with nuns. And um, they, the cranes adopted him when he was about two, um, I don't know, maybe three. Uh, and took him to uh, Colorado Springs and then, then to Santa Fe. Mrs. Crane, they divorced. And then she was in, Sa in Albuquerque and then. Santa Fe. Cool, cool. So going back to what you what you what you what if you could do anything, what I do, and I was like, I want to go to Germany and really learn German, and you you ended up staying there, right? Yeah, and then I found your your uh, relatives, you know, from Jay. Okay, and my his you, mother, yeah. But we stayed there, and I got you know I grew I grew up. I pretty much had my childhood. Yes. In Germany. Right. You were. Uh, First in a little preschool, and and um, I put you there. <coughs> they had they let you into this school with nuns, and they were very strict. Mm. And you didn't like it, so you so you left the school <laughs> looking for me. How old was I? <laughs> yeah, maybe four and a half, and 
And so I had the police looking for you, and you you figured out the, uh, the subways, the subway plan. And, you know, you go and you look. And you got on the right subway, and you got back to me. And, but we were really, really scared, and the police were looking for you and everything. And then after that, I found a nice preschool with young teachers, and they would play with you and flip you, and you loved it. So not that you cool. didn't like the nuns. <laughs> they were too strict. You had yeah. to sit still. Yeah. Well, Germany was, uh, you know, I'm so grateful for the for that, just that experience. I just had yeah. such an amazing childhood. Yeah. You left yeah. when you were 11, but you were in the, you made it to the gymnasium, which is the highest. So they have sort of a, what would you call it, a, sis, a different system, you know, where you go to different track tracks like it was a track system right, like so you were the university level and then uh, i put you in the clancy gymnasium which uh, was a math science gymnasium yeah and then we moved back to the u.s when uh, i married edward and we uh moved back to santa fe for a you, while yeah you can hear the and then albuquerque uh -huh. You can hear the Muay Thai, the martial arts, the Muay Thai kickboxing training downstairs, right? Yes. What do you think about me dedicating my life to to this this kind of stuff? Well, I really love that you that you try and help people to be healthier, and and then you just have a big heart, and you're always doing the right thing, you know. So I'm I'm happy about that, and I don't have to to worry. <coughs> about you and then you, I'm I'm so happy for my grandchildren uh, that you gave me <laughs> and yeah there's I tell people like you got your blue belt too is that true oh <laughs> when uh, you had like the three four years of, when of you ha I went to yeah to the school in Santa Fe and then you had a um the the, the belt giving event you you. whatever you call it and then Bill you were graduation. Yeah, graduation. And you were calling people's names and you said, Virginia? And I was like, Who's that? <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> and it was me that I got and I got a blue belt, but I was shocked. <laughs> and my younger sister, right? She got until I moved away, she got her orange belt. Yes. She was pretty good too. Yeah. She was pretty good. Yeah, all of you had really strong legs. <laughs> I don't know where you got those big muscles on the legs. Maybe dad's side. Mm -hmm. What did you think about me moving to Brazil? Um, well, I, I was, I was, um, I, I understood, you know, why you wanted to do that. But back in those days, they didn't have cell phones or computers, and I was really worried. Sometimes I had to call the police once because I hadn't heard from you from you for months, and so. I'd have to call on a payphone, and not yeah. even coins. You would have to buy like a card, and then put the card into the phone, mm -hmm. and then that's how I could be able to. That's how I would be able to call, yeah. call, call you. And then you, you were really a trooper. One time you lived in a sort of a. I had to find a. You were in a place. Can we talk, can't talk now. In a place where you had to cross a, a like a, a lagoon, like a lagoon, like a, yeah. and then there was feces. There was. This, yeah, it the, was the really the dirty. Sewage, the sewage, sewage back yeah. Up sometimes into that yeah, water. Yeah, and yeah, and you didn't have a paddle, and you would, <laughs> with your, <laughs> you were determined to learn, you know, no matter what, and so you have a lot of determination, just like, like my dad. Yeah. What do you think about legacy and the, everything that we have here? I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it's really going, you know, in the right direction and. You keep adding things, and it's every time I come, it's just amazing to see. And everybody's, it's like a big family, in my opinion. <laughs> Even my, the old students in New Mexico, right? The original students there. Yes. Yeah. CJ comes sometimes. She's they all come to champion, visit. The world champion, uh, uh, the world champion in Brazil, right? When, when they had the worlds down there. Mm-hmm. And then Jess Martinez, yeah, he comes, and who else? I don't know. A lot of a lot of the students 
uh, and the offspring of the students. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, one of the biggest honors is when uh, you know, like Tim has a son. Tim, and, yeah. And uh, him bringing, you know, they 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 start having kids, right? The student, they they grow up and Tim. Tim, I mean, Tim was fifteen, right, when he started. Uh, but now he's like, you know, he has his son. Tim Valdez. Valdez, yes. Yeah, and his dad was so nice; he would fix my husband's Edward's uh, mm -hmm. dentures that would break. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that was wonderful really nice. people. That was really nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, that didn't allow him to to pay. That was man that meant meant a lot to my yeah my stepfather. My yeah. Stepdad. Yeah. <laughs> so it is like a family, right? We all take yes. care of each other. Right. Yeah. And then Edward Edward passed away in December. Yeah. He stepped. He was from Munich, Germany, and. You spoke, used to speak pretty good German, but at 11, that's the cutoff time. If you don't continue speaking, you know, you can lose some of it. But at the time, you were very fluent. In fact, I had trouble with you getting you to speak English. When I was younger, we moved back for a year because I, I, I wasn't speaking English at all at home, right? Too. Right. So I moved back. Mom kept asking me to come back, and then she'd have the school call me, you know, <laughs> you know, go back to the high school and teach. So, so I, I went back for one year and it was, it was kind of difficult for you because the American teachers didn't want you to write the way they, um, write the cursive and whatever. So, <clears throat> and then when we went back to Germany, they wanted you to be writing the German cursive. So we ended up printing and that's what they all do now. They don't even learn cursive. In the in the schools in the yeah. U.S., but um, in Germany, I don't know. Maybe they still learn cursive, but I think it, I think it's great. It's important to learn. Yeah, like uh, I remember the schools, the, the my elementary school, like how they had the the groups separated by religion, mm -hmm. like Christian, like uh, it was a Catholic, mm -hmm. Catholic, and you were all Catholics in the class. Yeah. You made your whole First Holy Communion there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then they had the class. Another class was Protestants. Yes. And then like the Muslim and all the other kids. And the they Jewish were, and then. Well, they just called them atheists. It was the atheist class. Yeah, the, those that didn't have a religion, so they. You think it's still like that, in Germany? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Probably not, right? I don't know. That was yeah. great, though. Yeah, you know? I mean. So you could, you know, choose what what fit what was the best fit you used to always tell me don't get involved with religion and uh politics and you working in the schools for all the years so mm -hmm. do you think that's the that you know it's religion and school oh well you know in, in germany it's different that the you pay the taxes for that they they support yeah the the catholic schools all the schools yeah they, they get they get the government money not like the u.s so yeah. you know so you could choose what you want. Yeah, I guess I won't talk about it since you yeah, tell me won't never get to into talk politics. about it. <laughs> but uh, so so, you know, I moved out here in 2007. Mm -hmm. You know, we have like our family's been in New Mexico forever, mm -hmm. and you know, I had had, I was I'm happy wherever, and I was really happy being in New Mexico, being in Santa Fe, and <coughs> um, and then I had a conversation with you. I, I met Edith and. One thing led to another, and I was like, hey, uh, I think I need to be moving to L.A., moving out of Santa Fe. Yeah. Do you remember that moment? Yeah, I was sad. <laughs> yeah, very sad. And then, uh, but I had to accept it, and so I understood, you know. So she, her father had died, and the family needed her here, and she has a big family support over here, which we didn't in Santa Fe, you know. We're the only ones. I do have a sister and brother. My brother's a attorney. He's retired now. And my sister was vice pro provost of New Mexico State and then vice president at the community college after she retired from New Mexico, New Mexico State University. <laughs> yeah, but it was, uh, I remember having that. It was hard. It was a hard conversation to have with you. That I was going to be moving to moving yeah. out of Santa Fe. Yeah, I was I was sad. Yeah. How did you get yourself out of it? Well, how did you change your? I had to I mind? had to accept what you wanted. You know, just like I mean, I'm, I 
I gave you all, everything I could when you were young. You had piano lessons, soccer. I started the soccer program in Santa Fe for you, so you could be in that. You in the chess club. You were. Um, what else did you do? Played the violin. I got your violin. <laughs> Family secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Viol <laughs> family secrets. <laughs> Violin and piano lessons. And you were in the orchestra in, in South Carolina when we were there. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then when, when, I, uh, when I was in school, too, I was in the orchestra. And, and we used to call it, middle school used to be called junior high. And so I played the violin and I got teased a lot, you know, for that. But, and then I had piano too, so I wanted to give you everything and then everything that I learned and more. And then I figured, you know, I didn't care if you continued it. I just wanted you to have that experience. So I did my best every, even time, even when we moved, times when we moved to get you going on, in the same direction. Be exposed, yeah, to different, mm -hmm. different things to learn, to open mm -hmm. up the mind, right? Mm hmm so you have the experience, and then later on, if you want to continue, you can, or not, you could, or not. Yeah. So life, life is, uh, can you believe, if you feel young, I know you're, my, gr my grandpa, like, your dad, he was young at heart till the end. And he looked pretty young, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, he acted uh, young, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, how do you feel? How do you feel, like, about life and... Just the the journey of life. Well, I'm I'm. We're here I'm in ha LA I'm right now. Happy with my life, with you know what I've ha um, experienced and what have I, what I have achieved, and especially you and my children and grandchildren. But but uh, you know I'm sad for losing my husband in December, and and then I was sad when you were diagnosed with MS. When was it 2012? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was really sad for me but you 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 know just like dad you he overcame his blindness and you do your best to overcome the you you go on you know so i'm proud of proud of you yeah what are you thinking back at your life what are you what are you grateful for you just said a few things but what do you like what are you what are you most grateful for um my my children my, that's what i'm most grateful for because that's what I wanted, you know, more than anything. Because when I first uh, married your dad, the doctor said I couldn't have any children, and at that time I was pregnant with Carmita. <laughs> and I, I was real sad. I was with, with Gilbert. He was uh, uh, my cousin, my first cousin. He was uh, the doctor to the astronauts, Apollo 11, I think. From NASA, right? Yeah. And he was a flight surgeon, so he would be there when they... Return to Earth, yeah. Well, thank you, Mom. Thank you for. I thought that was really cool that you asked me. You asked to be on, on my on my podcast on my show. Yeah. I thought that was really cool, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think you were gonna ask me that. Yeah. Well, I wasn't too sure, <laughs> but I'm glad you know I did because I don't know how. Yeah. To how document. How much longer I'll be in this earth? Document. Um, yeah. And share some stories and experiences yeah our experiences right i could go on and on but there is a time limit love you mom love thank you, you too. for thank you for i can't even say thank you but just thank you for everything thank you for You're welcome being the amazing mom you are grandma i loved watching that wrestling movie with you last night it's like i wish i would i, I, I would i, I would have wrestled i wish i could have wrestled Mm -hmm. And me saying that to my to your grandkids, like you know, Grandma, she said that she wish she could have wrestled. Yeah, like, who, who says that? Yeah, <laughs> how many yeah. grandmas will my say brother, that? My brother, you know, my bro <laughs> <laughs> brother actually taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gave him a hard time. He he liked to wrestle with me because I it wasn't that easy mm -hmm. to pin me down. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Love you, mom. Love you too. Liebe dich. Liebe dich auch.